Oh, here we are. I can see it. I can, I can see it. Oh, I love it. V8 manual, baby. Well, g'day everyone. Exciting times. We are heading down to Melbourne to pick up our new 76 series Land Cruiser. For those of you that haven't been following along, almost two years ago, I think it was October 2021, we put an order in for a brand new 76 series Land Cruiser. We're just on the new highway at the moment, so you'll have to excuse the camera work. Uh, the highway's in shocking condition at the moment. There's plenty of lumps and bumps, so we'll do our best. So in this video, we wanted to go through with you well, firstly, at the end of this video, you're gonna to get to see the 76. We can't wait to show you that as we pick it up from the dealership. But at this video, we just wanted to, before we get to that point, go through a little bit about why we're buying a new vehicle, why we're getting rid of our Ford Ranger, uh, what other vehicles we considered, uh, what role we want our vehicle to perform or what roles we want our vehicle to perform and how we're gonna make the 76 what we consider to be the perfect touring vehicle for us and for our needs and for what we need. I am so excited. Like Graham Cahill would say, I'm like a dog with two tails. I'm that excited. I cannot wait. I am frothing to get down there and see it in the flesh. It feels like it's just been this pipe dream for so long and it's finally happening. So I could not be more excited. And if you enjoyed this video and what we share with you and if you learned something, don't forget to hit that like button. Let YouTube know that this is a decent video and that it should show it to more people. Uh, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, and in particular, if you want to see not only our travel content, but a heap of the content around this 76 series cruiser and the build that we do on that and the modifications we choose, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we put a video out. We're gonna be trying to do something a bit different with this YouTube series with the vehicle that is probably a bit different to what you might have seen before in that we're not gonna just be showing you a whole heap of different products and modifications and things like that um, and just what we chose. We're gonna be taking you through the entire journey of the decision-making process. So why we're choosing certain products, what, uh, what role we want them to serve for us, how we think that's gonna improve the vehicle for our needs. We really just feel like there's a bit of information missing out there as to not just what mods and what great products are out there, but why you might choose those products for your vehicle and whether or not they might suit the role or the, or the purpose that your vehicle needs to perform. And don't forget a quick one as well, if you haven't heard already, we are hosting the Pioneer Party. It is gonna be our first ever meet and greet group meet, meet up where we're gonna be going camping at Burham Shores Campground up there just north of Harvey Bay on the Queensland coast. It is one of our favorite campgrounds in the entire country and we're inviting you to come and join us for a weekend of fun, laughs, beers, campfires, food, and everything else in between. If you haven't booked already, sites are limited and they are booking fast. Hit the link in the description below, jump over and book your site and join us there at Barham. We hope to see you there. Before we start getting into why we decided to change vehicles from our current Ford Ranger, I want to talk a little bit about the roles that we've identified that our vehicle needs to serve. So a vehicle needs to be able to do all four of these roles reasonably well uh, without um, significantly compromising one of the other roles. So those four roles are, obviously it needs to be a really good tow vehicle. We tow a caravan around the country and needs to perform the role of tow vehicle uh, as well as it possibly can. Second is full driving. We want to be able to do a lot more full driving uh, than what we've currently been doing uh, and go to some of the more remote and extreme and difficult to get to places around the country. We've sort of scratched the surface in our first couple of years and been to a lot of places around the country but in doing so we've uncovered a whole lot more places we'd like to get to uh, that we just didn't feel like the Ranger was up to the task of doing. Role number three is we need a vehicle that is going to support us away from the caravan. We want to do some of those trips that include some of this more uh, sort of intense full driving and be able to, the vehicle to be able to support our family of four away from the caravan for a number of days up to potentially up to a week. Role number four is it needs to be able to do all of those first three roles, but it also still needs to be a great family vehicle. It needs to be just an everyday family vehicle for going down to the shops, for going down to the local playground, uh, for going down to the beach for the day, whatever it might be. It needs to be able to do that as well. Um, and so when we're looking at not just the vehicle that we chose and how we selected the vehicle, but then also what modifications and accessories and everything we're gonna to fit to that vehicle, we kept all four of these roles in mind through that entire process. And we're gonna take you through a bit of that process and show you 
why we selected the 76 to start with as the platform to build our ultimate uh, touring vehicle, but also along throughout this series that we're gonna take you on, uh, take you on the journey of why we selected each of these components because what suits us and our needs um, is exactly that. And what suits us and our needs, it may not suit you and your needs, but we want to help you sort of take you on the journey of how we identified those so that you can go through the same process with your needs and decide uh, what accessories and modifications uh, you might need to make, but also what vehicle you might want to select. If you're in the position where you're choosing a vehicle to go traveling around the country or touring around the country, making sure you choose the right vehicle to start with, but then also be able to choose the right modifications to enhance its uh, ability to perform those roles that you need it to perform. When we first set out on the trip, we sort of set out for a one year trip that very quickly extended and became an indefinite trip. Now the Ranger has performed exceptionally well for the last couple of years of us touring around. I think bang for buck, and a lot of you that have followed us for a while would have heard me say this before, but I think bank for buck or value for money, this range, it was hard to go past and I still think it was the right decision for the trip that we had planned at the time. And it's done exactly what we needed and done it really, really well on a relatively low budget. So the first thing we looked at is what can we do to our current Ranger? Is it possible to just do some modifications and upgrade the current Ranger to be able to perform all of those roles? And while it definitely would have been possible to improve it in some of those areas, to get the Ranger to where we wanted it to be to be able to do those was going to cost so much money. Um, we would have, you know, we would have been doing train canopy on the back, dual battery system, fridges, all these sorts of things um, that we're probably going to do a lot of those things anyway to our new vehicle, but to a seven-year-old vehicle that's done 130,000 Ks, that's done a lot of that, those Ks towing, we were, had concerns about investing that amount of money into a vehicle uh, of its age and, and with what it's done. And I still didn't think we'd be able to get it to be as much of a, an off-roader, like a four-wheel drive, that one of those four rolls. I think we could have made it a better touring vehicle, a better camp vehicle to camp out of, but it still would have been limited as far as its four-wheel drive, four drive capability. And that's a really big one for us, is one of the really big ones we want to improve on is its four-wheel drive capability. So, that's what the 76, not just out of the factory, but once we do all the modifications we got planned for that, um, it's gonna perform that role so much better uh, than what our current Ranger can. So we're really excited to use it for that, to get out and explore some of those awesome four wheel drive tracks that are out there, get into the deserts, and not just crossing the Simpson and things like that, but a lot more of the desert regions all throughout the country, particularly through Australia's interior, um, a lot more coastal exploring and things like that. Being able to get out to Dirk Hartog Island and things like that, you know, some really good four-wheel driving, but also having that vehicle that's going to be able to support our family on trips like that. So we're going to turn this 76 into what I think is probably one of the most capable four-wheel drive tourers in the country. Um, more on that later though. Okay, so what other vehicles did we consider then once we decided that it was that it was going to be best for us to move the Ranger on and replace it? We started to look at, okay, if we did replace it, what would we replace it with? We considered everything from replacing the Ranger with another dual cab ute, like a D-Max or, or another Ranger or a Hilux or something like that. We looked at uh, all the American trucks, you know, from the 1500s to the 2500s and the 3500s. We looked at, you know, what are becoming now, popular now, that weren't that popular back then, but with, a, you know, like the Isuzu, um, NPS trucks, uh, Mitsubishi Canter trucks, those big dual cab trucks, um, as well as, you know, obviously the other Land Cruiser offerings, Y62 patrols, uh, three, well, the 300 wasn't out then, but back then it was the Land Cruiser 200 series. We looked at all of these different vehicles and related all of them back to those four roles that we wanted the vehicle to perform. In that mix as well was obviously the dual cab Land Cruiser, the 79, which is probably the number one question we're getting with when we tell people that we're getting a 76 is why not a 79 series dual cab? And I'll touch a bit more on that. Um, and we went through all of those vehicles and then eventually actually put three vehicles on order over the, uh, over the period of about six months. Uh, and I'll explain why in a minute. Firstly, why not an American truck? Uh, why not a, a, you know, a 2500 Ram, Silverado, F250, whatever you like, or a 1500? Um, 
the 1500s I ruled out pretty quickly because they don't have a, a great payload. Um, when you really look at their uh, towing figures, as far as performing that role as a tow vehicle, I didn't think it was going to be that much better. And I didn't have that much confidence in their four-wheel drive ability either. And they're starting to get a little bit big for just general day-to-day -day use. When you go to the 2500s, um, it solves some of those issues, but makes some of them worse. They're even bigger, um, even less convenient on a day-to-day -day basis to go down to the shops or to get into you know, tight car parks, even at your favorite waterfall spot or, or some beaches we go to even have pretty small car parks and things like that. We just didn't want to have an issue parking it or finding somewhere to park it when we wanted to go and visit places. Although the 2500 um, size in those uh, American trucks would have uh, been a far better tow vehicle or than the Ranger and, and tow ex seem exceptionally well. Um, they're not renowned as being exceptionally good four-wheel drives and like I said, they weren't going to perform that fourth role of being a great day-to-day -day driver. Pretty much the same thing applied when we started to look at anything like an MPS truck or a Mitsubishi Canter or any of those sort of bigger four-wheel drive trucks. Um, again, they'd make a great tow vehicle. They'd be great to camp out of um, on those longer trips away from the caravan. Uh, but they just, I just didn't feel like they were going to be great off-roaders. Sure, you can run up the beach in them and you can do some four-wheel driving in them, but just their physical size meant that wherever I could get them, I was probably able to get my caravan as well, or close to it. So it really wasn't going to serve the role or go down some of the tracks and do some of the things we wanted to do as a four-wheel drive. So then one of the other main categories we looked at is um, Rangers and, and, like I said, Hiluxes and, and D-Maxes and things like that. Similarly to the uh, 79 series, Land Cruiser and why we didn't go with the 79 series Land Cruiser is, apart from all the general four-wheel drive accessories that we were probably going to fit no matter what vehicle we bought, things like a snorkel, a bull bar, um, a tow bar obviously, um, all of the basic sort of stuff that we wanted just to have in our four-wheel drive. On top of all that, we then were going to be up for 30 plus thousand dollars, you know, 30, 40, even 50 thousand dollars depending on how, and, and even more, depending on how far you want to go with it for a tray and canopy package, for a good quality tray and canopy package, um, you know, the top that I would have wanted to buy. So that added a huge amount of cost on top of the buying the vehicle itself, um, which really started to rule out, I mean, again, going back to those, um, those trucks, the American trucks, any of the dual cab utes, we sort of realized that it was just gonna be a much bigger investment than what we were prepared to make. And again, it came back to that thing, if we were gonna do that, we'd probably just do it to our current Ranger um, to try and keep the budget down. Um, and we, at that point, already decided, like I said, that uh, there was reasons we didn't want to do that. So that started to rule out dual cab utes, and we started to look at alternatives to dual cab utes, which really became a wagon. The other reason I didn't want to go a dual cab ute again, even though this was much less significant, was just the fact that I've had about five four-wheel drive dual cab utes now, and I have never owned a four-wheel drive wagon. My very first four-wheel drive was actually a 1985 Troopy, a 75 series Troopy, if anyone remembers those, the old uh, six-cylinder, uh, four-liter, naturally aspirated um, Troopies. I had a pop-top one of those. I did my first lap in one of those in 2005. But since then, all my four-wheel drives have been dual cabs. Um, so I was, I was also pretty keen to explore something a little bit different and, and try out a wagon. So then when it came down to wagons, there's really a, a fairly limited number of wagons that I thought were going to be a suitable platform to be able to perform those roles that we wanted the vehicle to perform. And they were really get, it was really coming down to, um, in our budget and for what we wanted the vehicle to do, a Y62, uh, a, a 200 series, like I said at the time, or it would have ended up probably being a 300 series um, since they got released, and the 76 series uh, Land Cruiser wagon. There's obviously a whole range of others that you could look at, like Pajero and Discoveries and and other Range Rovers and things like that. There's the Jeeps and a whole range of others, but I wasn't a fan of any of those. I didn't think they were gonna be the best platform for us for what we wanted to go and do. So it really came down to those three. A surprising fourth vehicle though that we did consider pretty carefully uh, was the Ineos Grenadier. Uh, if you're not familiar, Ineos is a new car company. Uh, they're bringing their first vehicle, which is called the Grenadier to Australia. It's a four wheel drive wagon. Uh, it's built as a dedicated four wheel drive from the ground up. If you haven't heard of them, go and do your research. They're, it's a really interesting project um, and a car that was um, actually on our shortlist. It became one of the three uh, on our shortlist. Uh, I ruled out the Y62 pretty early. 
Uh, I just personally would rather a diesel vehicle. I love my diesels. I didn't want a V8 petrol. Um, I'm also not a fan of the interior, although that can be that can be fixed. That was minor. Um, but yeah, I just I, I wanted a diesel tow vehicle. I didn't really want want the petrol, so I ruled that one out pretty early. When it came to the Land Cruiser 200 or 300 series, it was it again just came down to bang for buck. For the money that I was going to spend on a 200 series, and then still need to spend quite a lot more money on it. Um, I thought, although it would make a great full drive, probably a re it would make a really good tow vehicle. Uh, it would have been great to build it to camp out of, and it would have been a, a reasonably good day-to-day -day driver. It just came down to budget. At the end of the day, if I bought a, you know, a, one of the sort of higher spec GXL sort of uh, Land Cruisers, and then spent all the money I was going to spend on it, I still wasn't really going to end up with a vehicle that I was really passionate about. It would have done all those jobs okay, and I would have spent a whole lot of money for something that I didn't, wasn't really that excited by. So that really left us with the Grenadier and the 76. We actually ended up ordering both of those. Um, we had a Grenadier on order for some time, uh, and we also had a Ford Ranger on order. Uh, at that time, the V6 had just been announced, and we were really excited to see you know, what that vehicle was gonna end up, whether it was gonna end up being a suitable vehicle. And it really would have been, it just came down to, like I said before, all the reasons we ruled out a dual cab U. When we first ordered the Grenadier, all of the final specs and everything hadn't been released. And we were really hoping that it was gonna turn out to be the perfect vehicle for us. And for a long time, it was really looking like it was gonna be exactly what we were looking for. In the end though, what killed that idea and what made us settle on the 76 was just the weights. Unfortunately, when the tear weights came out for the Grenadier, uh, by the time you uh, added, you know, towing a big heavy trailer or a three and a half ton caravan, basically, with the Grenadier, uh, it just was going to limit our payload too much. And we didn't want to go and spend the amount of money we were going to spend and do all these things to get a new vehicle and for it to not perform the number one role that we need to perform, which is our tow vehicle. I think it would have done the other three roles exceptionally well. Um, and I think it would be a really good tow vehicle for a smaller trailer, but for a full-size caravan like what we wanted, we just felt it was gonna to be too limited with payload. Um, the other thing, I guess, that was in the back of our mind a little bit with the Grenadier was just that it being a new vehicle to market, accessories and modifications for it were gonna be limited. Um, and there's probably a little bit of a question mark over its potential reliability, but that was, that was less of a concern. It was more just that um, availability of, um, of accessories and mods uh, that really started to, to turn us off. And then the weights, like I said, put the final nail in the coffin for that one. What we're really excited about the 76 is we know it's got a lot of shortcomings. We know that it's, you know, it doesn't have a great lot of safety. It doesn't have a lot of tech. It's not super efficient, really, really basic interior, exterior. It's a design that Toyota's basically been flogging since, you know, for the last 30 or 40 years. And honestly, if you don't, um, if you don't understand why people buy 70 series Land Cruisers, at the end of the day, I think the only people that buy 70 series are people like me that are extremely passionate about them, that absolutely love them. I've been in love with 70 series Land Cruisers since I owned that 1985 Troopy right back in 2004, 2005. And ever since Toyota went and dropped a nice big V8 in the front of them in the VDJ series, I have wanted one, but have never been able to justify it. Um, it's, always, it's never been able to suit the roles of the vehicle that I needed for that stage of life where we were at. That's all changed now. At the end of the day, we're so, so confident that this 76 series is gonna be a one of a kind, like no other vehicle in the country, a build like no other you've seen before on YouTube or anywhere else. It's gonna be unique. It's gonna be personal to us. It's gonna perform those four roles, in our opinion, the best that any vehicle available in the Australian market could. So come along on the journey and share with us your thoughts. Let us know whether you agree with our decisions, whether you don't. Um, I'm keen to learn from you guys. And look, we don't have it all figured out yet. There's still some things that we haven't decided on. So if you've got any suggestions for us, leave them in the comments below because I've learned so much from our audience. So many of you out there have already owned 70 series or been full driving longer than we have or whatever it might be that's given you some sort of unique insight or experience that you could share with us that's going to help us out we really appreciate all that input if you don't already follow us on instagram and facebook jump over and follow us there as well because we're we're engaging in conversations there with our audience as well that you might not see here on youtube just because of the difference between the platforms 
Um, but yeah, if you want to get involved in that, jump in. We'd, the more the merrier. We can't wait to share it with you all. We're going to get down to Melbourne and get this car. So next time we see you, it's going to be standing at the dealership in front of our brand new 76 Series. Uh, so we made it to Melbourne, um, had a few delays, but I'm so excited. We're on our way to get our new car. It's been over two years in the making. I'm, I just, I still can't believe it's actually happening, that it's actually going to be there. Well, I'm just really looking forward to this, I don't know, just getting a car with a bit of soul, a car that we can personalize and make our own. Um, it's no secret, the 70s are pretty standard uh, in there, you know, as they come out of the factory but that's why I really wanted one, is because we can personalize it and make it exactly what we want out of a vehicle. I'm pretty pumped for that. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a really fun couple of months customizing this car to be what we want. It's gonna take me back. There's nothing like looking at a catalog online for your new car and it says that the product you're looking at suits uh, Toyota 70 series 1984 to current model. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you how little they've changed, which is awesome. I love it. I'm pretty pumped. Like it's, it does feel a bit surreal and a little bit overwhelming that after so long, it's finally going to happen, that we're actually going to go get this thing. We're going to get this car. Let's do it. Oh, here we are. I can see it. I can, I can see it. so basic. <laughs> Honey, it's, not. it's so beautiful. I feel like it's part of the family. Are we going to get out of here? Let's get out of here. Eh? It's so high. Oh, it feels good. Oh my goodness. It's really high already. We haven't, we haven't even lifted it yet. Away all the secrets. <laughs> you stick stuff. Yeah. Maybe you could drive it straight through the centre of Melbourne. Yeah. What could go wrong? Oh, except for the turning circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. V8 manual, baby. This is a real car. <laughs> Ew. Probably can't hear anything because I got my window down. I keep, honestly, it's that old school. I keep going, I've done it twice now, tried to roll my window up with the manual roller. I feel like I've just gone back in time. Like, oh, this is awesome. We're gonna take this back. Um, we're gonna hit the road. We're gonna head back to Queensland, back to the workshop. If you were taking a 76 series unregistered to a full drive shop, what are the first three things you would get done to it? Yeah guys, cannot wait to show you what we do with this car. We've got some awesome plans as we've said. More information on that in the next video. Stick around for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see exactly what we get up to with this car. Not just the build, but what we do with it afterwards. Cannot wait to show you all that. Uh, we're back, baby. We are, I'm so excited. This is worth every minute. Um, someone said to us uh, during the week on our social media that It'll be like giving birth. Uh, the delivery is painful, but once you got it, you'll fall in love and you won't even think about it again. And I've already forgotten about it. It's awesome. Let's do this. But look, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's like that, I don't know what to liken it to. You know, something that you just know you shouldn't love, but you do, and you can't help it, and you end up marrying it. <laughs> just kidding. I love my wife. She's amazing. <laughs>